Sometime after completing his script for Hereditary, writer-director Ari Aster experienced a very unpleasant breakup. Like any artist, he channeled that into his work, writing 2019's Midsommar. It is the story of Danny, a quiet 20-something woman who has recently lost her family in a murder-suicide. She has a boyfriend called Christian. He does not love her, and was working out the courage to break up with her the night the murder-suicide happened. So, out of guilt, he stayed with her. The relationship is not a happy one, with Christian unable to show affection and Danny unable to confront him about it due to her need for an emotional anchor. Six months later, the couple, along with three of Christian's university compatriots, travel to a remote commune called Haga in Sweden to observe the community's unique cultural practices. Sadly, spoilers from here on out, but the community is an extremely malevolent cult that has lured outsiders every 90 years for use in ritual sacrifices. Soon, it's just down to Danny and Christian. Danny is invited into the cult, as the community has been nothing but friendly and even familial to her, and she has just witnessed an act of supposed infidelity by Christian, she embraces the ways of Haga and condemns Christian to burn in sacrifice. While the audience is perhaps happy that Danny has found some measure of inner peace, it is clear from what we have seen, in particular the rape of Christian staged by the cult to look like a consensual ritual, that the cult is manipulating her. Furthermore, Though Christian is an unlikable character, he is not depicted as overtly psychologically abusive and was, in some ways, just as much a victim of miscommunication between himself and Danny as Danny was. Therefore, his death still feels horrifying. But that was the theatrical cut of Midsommar. Not soon after the theatrical 148-minute cut was unleashed upon the world, Astor presented a 172-minute director's cut. Though the narrative does not go through significant change, the characters are drastically transformed. Danny is now depicted as more assertive, attempting to communicate to Christian her problems with their relationship. In response, he gaslights her. Then he gaslights her again. In fact, he gaslights her so hard that he actually ignores Danny's concerns for his own safety. They're doing pagan rituals. People are jumping off cliffs. They depend on no one knowing about this ever. Not necessarily. The film now also features more black comedy, nudging the tone towards the more sociopathic internal logic of that genre. Take the moment where Christian realizes that one of the girls of the commune has given him food laced with her pubic hair. In the theatrical, we cut to a close-up of Christian saying those words, making it a more personal and troubling moment. I think I ate one of her pubic hairs. Sounds probably right. Whether it was in the directors, we stay on a wide, as though being willfully disconnected from the moment and observing it in all of its absurd glory. I think I ate one of her pubic hairs. Oh, sounds probably right. As such, when we reach the climax of the film, Danny's complicity in the murder of Christian not only feels more cathartic and earned, the fact that Christian could potentially still be alive if he just listened to the woman who sent us into death is extremely ironic. Coupled with the audience working by comedy logic, the disturbing nature of Christian's death is now burned away in an inferno of schadenfreude. Though Astor is on record saying that he loves and owns the theatrical cut, from interviews it is rather clear he prefers a director's cut, probably for making the ending a more cathartic repudiation of toxic romances. It intrigues me, then, that Astor was so willing to damage the cathartic punch of his movie simply because A24 said it was too long. Witness the way the emotional impact of Christian forgetting Danny's birthday is now much less impactful because, well, we now learn about it not long before he does. Just the inclusion of one of the 24 minutes of footage he excised could have reinforced the themes of the DC enough that one could have walked away with a better sense of that unambiguous moral victory that was communicated in the director's cut. However, I think it is a testament to Astor's genius that he didn't, because while it would be easy to make Christian more unlikable with just one minute of added footage, to make his death ironic, darkly comic, and cathartic all at the same time would have required multiple clips of that footage not only to introduce those elements, but, especially in the case of the comedy, we enforce them. In short, and we couldn't just remove one scene. If you remove one scene, kind of like this almost 15 minute section goes with it. With a whole subtext removed, the film was able to thrive on the many ideas it already had about cult mentality, grief, and family. And even an idea it would lose with the added footage, the horror of miscommunication. Astor saw the wisdom of thematic cohesion. Because Astor was confident he would get a director's cut, he made the decision to let the film be something else. And you know what? I prefer the theatrical. <laughs>